Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Diachronic, you're here on this Destiny 2 video and today we're going to be taking a look at my top 10 hunter exotics in Destiny 2. And a big thank you to my buddies who helped me get the PvP gameplay, link to their stuff in the description down below. And of course, throughout this video you'll be seeing pictures of a spreadsheet that I made for you guys, which is fully public for you guys to use, which can be found at my Discord server, link in the description down below on the channel, hashtag spreadsheet stock. And as always, we have cute animals on screen right now just to say thank you for watching this video. It really does help this video get out there just by watching this section. Moving on, let's go and take a deep dive into the spreadsheet. As you can see on screen right now, this is my spreadsheet. Dark theme, color-coded, pictures, recommendations for armor mods, scores for both PvP and PvE for every single different hunter exotic in the game, as well as my honorable mentions and top 10, as well as you can just go over to the Warlock and the Titan ones if you really want to. Now obviously I don't really do my top 10 like a lot of other people do. If you just want to know what I think is the best, then go to the spreadsheet and then pick from them. But the reasons why these things are going to be useful and what they're going to be useful in are going to be very important. So the first thing we're going to do is go through the honorable mentions and the top 10. Following that, we're going to go very briefly through all of the non-ranked items to talk about why they haven't ranked as well. Keeping in mind, some of these things are actually really, really good. Things like Raju's Harness and Raiden Flux are excellent exotics. 8 out of 10 in PvE and PvP for their respective role, but I do have to pick 10 for the top 10. Moving on, let's go ahead and get started. First up for the honorable mention, we have the 6 Coyote. Now this is an exotic that did not perform well enough to get in my top 10, probably not even the top 20. However, it's an exotic that's extremely useful for one particular use case in solo play. If you've never heard of it, you gain a second dodge charge. Probably the biggest reason why it's not highly ranked is because a second dodge charge is good, but not game breaking. The biggest reason you'd use this exotic is with the overflow charging and pairing it up with bottom tree void in Pathfinder to have nearly 100% invisibility. The way you do this is you pair it up with gambler's dodge, meaning you get your melee by dodging near an enemy, use your melee to make yourself invisible, and because of the incredible speed of the 11 second cooldown of tier 10 mobility dodge, you can get invisibility every 11 seconds and it lasts for around 5 to 10 seconds. And I know what you're probably thinking, what about Omnioculus? Another exotic chess piece which actually is at number 10 and that's probably better and generally I would agree with you. In fact, I've even given it a higher ranking. If you've never heard of this exotic, you gain an additional smoke bomb charge instead and you have additional damage resistance while invisible and any teammates that you also make invisible also get that 10% damage resistance and give you half of your melee for each teammate that you made invisible. On top of obviously getting the heart of the pack bonus for Pathfinder, which is really useful. Now, specifically, this perk is going to be better because, again, it does give you a lot more bonuses. You can still use the Gambler's Dodge to get your melee back if you haven't hit enough teammates with it. However, I find the 6 Cody in solo play to be a bit more consistent, especially if you mess up. You're only waiting on that overflow charging dodge. However, Omnioculus definitely encourages you to work with your team and you do get a little bit more resistance while making yourself invisible, so it definitely has more options and definitely deserves a higher ranking for very similar, if not the same application. And in case you haven't realized that already, going invisible in PvE is very significant, especially in areas where you don't have a lot of cover, being able to not be shot by your enemies is Grandmaster viable. And if you don't know what to use, Omnioculus plus Pathfinder for invisibility and being able to weaken enemies with your tether is an excellent option. Coming up at number 9, we have the Aeon Swift, which is the exact same as the other ones on the other classes. If you've never heard of this before, each one of them can select one of three different bonuses for that particular exotic, basically the exotic perk, and each one of these things has three different things they can do. The first thing helps you from what you do, the second thing helps you and your teammates from what you do, and the third thing helps you and Aeon exotic wielding teammates with an extra bonus. And from my experience, the last thing is not always the best thing. For example, the Sect of Insight allows you to spawn in special ammo and heavy ammo based on certain finishers for your teammates that don't even need to have Aeon equipped. And although it is a small amount of special and heavy ammo for finishing elite and mini boss enemies, it is still heavy ammo and mini bosses do count champions as well. So in a Grandmaster Nightfall, you can get like 10 to 20 different champions spawning in and that's 10 to 20 opportunities to get, for example, Anarchy, which is significant. The biggest reason why so many exotic specials are so good Ariana's Vow or Wither Horde or things like that is because they have a much better ammo economy. In things like Grandmaster Nightfalls, you need a 
lot more ammo, you don't have Rally Flat. And with this exotic, you can kind of circumvent that on top of all the other different bonuses all the other perks can do. And the last thing I'll say about this is that it's an excellent exotic to have if you like using stasis, especially if you're going for those stasis turrets or whatever class you're on, this is a good exotic to use because there's not a lot of great stasis based exotics. Moving on to number eight in this top 10, we have the Shinobu's Vow, an exotic that got an indirect buff whenever stasis got nerfed because it's better relative to other things. If you've never heard of it before, it improves the skip grenade, giving it extra little twiddly bits, which means more damage and more chances to do damage. You also get an additional skip grenade charge, which really helps with overflow charging. And again, skip grenade is one of the best grenades to have on arc. And finally, skip grenade hits actually return energy to your grenade. So you not only get overflow charging, you not only get more damage, you also get more twiddly bits and you get more energy back as you deal damage, effectively allowing you to throw around three grenades in a row if you start getting hits with it and you can kill enemies quite easily with it. On top of the artifact mods, we have ashes to assets in there. We have a bunch of other grenade mods. We have charge of light stuff with grenades. We have our uh, elemental well stuff with grenades. We have so many different interactions with grenades. And finally, again, because stasis did get nerfed, arc has become a little bit more prevalent, especially if you swap to, for example, Raju's harness whenever you want to use your super, it can be very useful to have swap exotic with Chernobyl's Vow. However, if you don't want to swap, Way of the Wind has a couple of different grenade-based stuff in it, and it also has that high-resistant dodge. Moving on to number seven in this countdown, we have the Orpheus Rig, an exotic that came out with the base game, used to be insanely powerful, was nerfed like four or five times now, and is still an excellent exotic to use. It allows you to basically get your super energy and your ability energy whenever you tether a bunch of enemies with Way of the Trapper or more Mobius Quiver shots with the bottom tree. Now, my opinion, the best way to use it is gonna be with Trapper top tree. You spawn a bunch of orbs for your teammates, so it's a nice support. It's also really big ones helping with crowd control and you share damage between every enemy that's tethered on top of weakening them, which also makes it ideal for boss damage. However, it actually kind of has fallen apart in a couple of different ways. First of all, there are a lot of other better support options that help you spawn spawn orbs. The big one being Ursa Furiosa, spawning a lot more orbs, making it a lot more consistent and helping your team get super. Other options like Well of Radiance or Bubble also allow you to spawn orbs pretty easily. Or for example, using Sharpshooter with Star Eater Scales, spawning six orbs as long as you get the headshots while also having insane damage. So there are definitely better options for the roles that this thing fills outside of the fact that you also get the invisibility from the dodge, which is obviously really, really good. So it's not as good as it used to be, but it's definitely an exotic that's very useful for this particular build. Up next at number six, we have the Wormhusk Crown, which is gonna be your quintessential PVP general hunter exotic. If you've never heard of it, dodging gives you a small increase in your health and shield, which is around 40 to 50% of your health and shield, which generally will help you escape with more health, meaning you'll survive more often. You'll be able to survive a little bit more shots in an engagement, usually against 120 hand cannons, which does help you if you're getting body shot and just in general being able to dodge every 11 seconds is something that a hunter does all the time anyways you get an incredibly nice bonus to help your survivability and on top of that i would actually recommend it for pve as well now obviously it's not nearly as effective as it is in pvp however if you find yourself dying a lot in certain activities being able to survive more even just a little bit more Wormhusk crown can really make a difference moving on at number five we have the mask of bacris an exotic that used to be number one one last season but after the stasis nerfs because this is a stasis only exotic has been relegated to number five however still an excellent use exotic with the exact same perk that has not been affected if you've never heard of it it basically replaces your stasis subclass dodge ability with a short range teleport it's kind of weird with the details but it is a teleport because you take no damage from point a to point b so half a second of invincibility from enemy rockets, grenades, shotguns, super abilities, Nova bombs, everything. And you have your weapons ready immediately as you exit the other side. Literally before you get out of third person, you have your weapons and you can fire that fell winters. As you're chasing down enemies, you teleport behind them, nothing personnel kid, and you unload your fell winter. The big downside for the PvP of it is the fact that it actually increases your dodge timer because it gives you this light shift bonus 
which doesn't actually work in PvP, but it does make your dodge a 9 second longer. Which 20 seconds is not really that significant, but 11 seconds is a lot better. If it did not have that part, it would be probably a 9 or 9.5 out of 10. Now for the PvE side of things, which is actually quite useful in PvE, that biggest bonus you get from this is going to be that extra 10% to arc damage, which actually stacks on top of everything else. It doesn't count as a standard player damage bonus, so you can stack it with the bubble, you can stack it with a divinity and with that war mind self thing you can stack all of those on top of each other and there are a lot of really big meta weapons with arc cloud strike person last out anarchy even ward cliff if you want are all arc weapon and there has been a lot of argument on whether using celestial nighthawk or mask of bacris is gonna be better in a lot of situations and it seems like mask of bacris is better in a lot of those and speaking of which coming up at number four we have the celestial nighthawk which turns your three golden gun shots into one six times damage shot that allows you to get some really high DPS, really high burst damage at infinite range. Now technically I don't consider Celestial to be as good as the Star Eater scales and I'll explain that once I get to it, but it is still an excellent exotic, especially the fact that you get around third of your super back whenever you get a kill, making it still an ideal option for Grandmaster Nightfalls on champion enemies, and also a, still a great thing to use in raids if you don't have an arc based weaponry with Mask of Bacris or you don't like that system. And again, probably one of the most important things here outside of Star Eaters is the fact that Falling Star has replaced Nighthawk as DPS Dump King and that's the biggest reason why you don't see it as often but it's still an excellent option and a lot safer as well. Up next at number three on this list we have the Star Eater Scales, an exotic that I was actually considering putting at a 9.5 out of 10 however I have not used it enough to really get a good feel for it. From my time of actually using this exotic first of all you get more super energy from picking up orbs meaning that you'll get your super a little bit sooner around 50% more super energy from orbs and whenever you get your super every orb after that up to eight will give you up to 70 percent more super damage with any of the damage parts of the super so if you want to do a higher damage sharpshooter with the three shot golden gun you get 70% more damage on that. Or if you wanted Blade Barrage with 70% more damage. Or if you wanted Arc Staff. Or if you wanted the Stasis Super. Or if you wanted Bottom Tree Void Mobius Quiver damage, which is already a very high damaging DPS Super, you can use it. The big thing here is that it doesn't technically increase the shared damage on Tether. Some people say it does. I've never found that that's true. It only really includes the explosion damage from when enemies pop. That being said, I think that the best use of this exotic is going to be with Sharpshooter. If you don't know, Sharpshooter actually got a buff like around a year ago that made it so every precision headshot gives you increasing damage, and it's actually, in total, not that much less than Celestial Nighthawk's damage. The biggest reason why Celestia was still king is because you did it all in one shot, you didn't have to get three headshots in a row, and it was much faster. You could get on to using some other weapon a lot faster. Whereas nowadays, Star Eater Scales doing around 80% of the damage of Celestia Nighthawk, plus the 70% on top of that is just the king nowadays. Or at least that's what it seems like. Again, I do need some more time to really feel this exotic out, but I do expect it to probably hit number one next season if there's not an insane new exotic. And the last thing I'll say is that this actually may be preferred when it comes to supporting your teammates with orbs. Every headshot made in Sharpshooter spawns two orbs on top of the orbs from killing enemies. So this is not only a great high damage thing, it's also good support for your teammates. And if all three of you had this, you may be able to juggle it between three different hunters. And if you like these kinds of videos or the spreadsheets you'll see throughout this video, please consider checking out my Patreon. Truly, without your help on Patreon, I wouldn't be able to make these spreadsheets. They take Take 10 to 20 hours every single week. I make absolutely no money from them. In fact, most people skip out in the video to use the spreadsheets. I make less money, but I really like making them because they're such a beautiful product. So if you want to see these continue, please consider checking out my Patreon. Link in the description down below. Moving on to number two in this countdown, we have the Dragon Shadow. An exotic that was already really good last season, but after the nerf to quick draw and the changes to some other perks, this exotic got even better. If you've never heard of it, dodging reloads all of your weapons, which means you can use Gambler's Dodge instead. Also getting that bonus to melee without needing marksman's dodge for reloading your weapon and it increases both your movement and weapon handling speed for a brief period of time first of all that extra movement speed actually increases your mobility by 20 which also reduces the cooldown on your dodge meaning you can put those other points on something else second it also makes you swap faster aim down sights faster and ready from sprint fire a lot faster it's like literally twice as fast as quick draw used to be last season we usually use this to cover the gaps wherever there wasn't snapshot 
Shot or Quick Draw or stuff that we just really wanted to be faster, now it is pertinent to a lot more things. And finally, because this does increase your speed on so many different things, you can use a lot more armor mods on other things. You don't need dexterity. You don't need targeting for aim down sight speed. You don't need to have a high handling. You don't need anything that has to do with any of this. You may not even need reload speed because of this exotic. And to top it all off, it's nearly 100% uptime. Considering Wraith Metal Mail lasts around 9 to 10 seconds and dodges usually take around 11 seconds at tier 10. And finally, at number one, we have the Stompies. Tried and true since the base game, an exotic that on paper doesn't seem that great, but is one of the best things to use in PvP. Now, if you've never heard of it, it increases your sprint speed, it increases your slide distance and velocity, and increases the velocity and jump height of all of your different jumps. Now, again, on paper, this doesn't seem that significant, but it in practice is incredibly useful. Firstly, the increased sprint speed means you can close the gap on targets and, of course, increase the gap when running away. And in shooter games, the faster your enemy moves, the harder they are to hit. Secondly, we have that increased slide distance, which allows you to slide with more velocity at more distance, which helps with slide shooting, especially with slide shotgunning. And lastly, improving your jump velocity and height means that your enemies have to reacquire you at a sharper angle above them whenever you do end up jumping, which is why a lot of people use high jump or that double jump with stompies because it's extremely violent. And as Shaq says, hunters blaze a path for the rest of us. What he means is using this exotic to flank enemies, jump in their faces, force that enemy to look straight up at the air, which takes a lot more time to reacquire your teammates at head level. So I guess in essence, Stompies is kind of a selfless exotic. It makes it so you get up in people's faces so your teammates can just wipe them up. Even if you die, it makes your teammates have a lot more efficiency. And with the top 10 out of the way, let's move on to the unranked items. And I know a lot of people will probably click off at this point in the video, but there's a lot of really nice and fun unranked items that you may want to know about. First up, we have the Assassin's Cow. Powered melee, which actually finally works with stasis nowadays, and finishers gives you invisibility. But melee is dangerous in high level play, and finishers are usually on the last enemy. Foe Tracer actually gives you the ability to see enemies through walls, just like one eye the mask used to do by looking in their direction, but it usually tells you about an enemy you already know about, whereas one eyed mask used to tell you about enemies you may not know about. And that extra damage is like the last 10 or 20%, really worthless. Graviton Forfeit, a kind of replacement for Six Coyote or Omnioculus for the invisibility effects, giving you longer invisibility, and it does work with Rat King, but I find myself exiting invisibility early because I want to do something. Knucklehead Radar, you can see your radar while aiming down sights, which is usually only possible on Ace of Spades and Mida Multi-Tool. You can use it on anything if you want it. The Aethers and Breaks, a number of bonuses to your weighted knife. First of all, an invisible perk here is it actually increases increases your course correction and aim assistance. And overall, Solar is actually a decent option in the Crucible right now. After the Stasis nerf, it's all right, but just not enough to make the top 10. Kepri Sting, an exotic that's actually banned in competitive play. However, a very high skill floor, high skill ceiling exotic. The way most people use it is that they just throw their melee smoke bomb at the floor and then they just, you know, see enemies through walls and they just spawn camp people. And in competitive play, if you have a sniper and you can see enemies through walls, you're gonna end up killing everyone. Liar's Handshake. You get a high damage melee with your arc stuff and you also heal off of it and it's fun, but not that much efficacy past the mid level. Mechaneer's Trick Sleep. A number of bonuses to your sidearms, which are honestly completely unnecessary and extra damage whenever you swap while critically wounded. A lot of stuff to do something that a shotgun can do with a lot more damage. Oath Keeper, probably the worst exotic armor in the game, giving you something that you can pretty much learn in five minutes. Sealed Ahamkara Grasp, giving you kind of a grave robber effect on melee damage that does work with ranged melees, giving you the ability to reload something that's probably very slow loading, helping your DPS, but not significantly. Shards of Galanor, giving you more super energy on your blade barrage hits and kills, and is pretty fun in melee and really effective in Vogue Atheon, but outside of that, it's inconsistent damage, inconsistent super return, and the rest of the subclass is trash. Young Ahamkar's Spine, a number of bonuses to your trip mine grenade. First of all, invisible perk here actually makes your trip mine take a lot more damage. Most people will stop shooting after the first 200 damage. Again, solar is viable these days, and this works pretty well. The only downside is that it's best used with Outlaw, with the proximity mine thing for the double hit, instant kill, and 
that has range drop off pretty significantly. Gwiz Invest. It's a swappable exotic for your super. It only really changes the number of kills you get per match by like one. Lucky Raspberry. If you like Arc Bolt Grenade, it chains farther, chains more often, and has a chance to instantly come back to you, but I generally prefer Shinobi's Vow and Skip Grenade. Ophidia Spaith. One of the most inferior exotic in the game. It gives you basically an additional melee charge just for solar. Claws of Amkara for the Warlock gives it for every single different subclass. Why is this just solar? Raid in Flux. An exotic that was actually pretty close to being in the top 10 that gives your arc staff an ability to last like twice as long as long as you're hitting enemies and arc staff in general especially on way of the win is one of the best ad clearing supers in the game and is grandmaster worthy because of way of the winds dodging resistance you can actually survive pretty well likewise rage use harness also a really good exotic that just missed the top 10 highly recommended because it allows you to cancel your whirlwind guard super early making it so you can use it more often so you can reflect more enemies supers including the arse ice tornado just great to use and definitely a swappable exotic following that we have the frosties which from what i understand wall sprinting increases those three stats by 50 so on average per game it's going to be maybe plus 20 on those stats keeping in mind that all of the stats have to be under 50 to get a bonus from it because every amount that it's not it's it's not going to give you that much probably one of the better universal exotics in the game but since the nerf to shuriken is not really that necessary to have your melee and your grenade that frequently Gemini Jester, dodge and make everybody around you lose their radar and have a flashbang effect on their screen and basically just sit in a corner and that's not what you want them to do. Lucky Pants, basically quick drop plus opening shot for your hand cannon, mostly used in a bow hand cannon or a grenade launcher hand cannon combo. Or if your hand cannon doesn't have quick drop or opening shot, you can use this exotic. And that's kind of popular since 120 hand cannons are still meta. The Bombardiers, leaves like a 100 damage explosion whenever you dodge, goes off after 2 seconds which most people just walk away from. I literally don't know anyone who's gotten a kill with this thing. It's <laughs> it's so easy to walk away from. And that's going to be pretty much the end of it. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions about these exotics or what I said in the video. And if there's an exotic you think I may have overlooked, please let me know why. And of course, a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. Truly, without their help, I really wouldn't be able to make these spreadsheets as much as I do. Specifically, I'm going to give a big thank you to Mady Boo Mom Dead, Dr. Strange, Joe Smith, my next Bachman, Mr. Raymond Shoner, you Panther, Cole Sherman, Casey Reagan, Father, support on Patreon. And that's the end of it. Hope you guys did enjoy my name's in and I'll see you guys on the next one.